Yeah, now that everybody's in. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Montana. I'm Senior Director of Admissions here at Wilson. Um, and I welcome you to our alumni panel. Um, this is one of the events that I'm actually particularly excited for, for a number of reasons. Um, but before I get into any of those, the first reason that I'm absolutely thrilled um, to introduce this panel is to introduce you to a man who joined the Wilson family um, only a couple months ago and truly has been um, you know, a great leader and a beacon of hope, I know, in these tough times. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce uh, President Fugit uh, to welcome you to the panel. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say that I hope uh, that as we all gather today that you and those you care about most are well during these very challenging times. All of us at Wilson are thinking about you and cheering you on. I know this has been um, uh, the most unusual of circumstances for the last several months and know that all of us here uh, are keeping you in our thoughts. Um, and and secondly, I just want to say how excited I am that you are interested in learning more about Wilson College. Um, this is a remarkable place. When people ask me why was I interested in, in coming to be the president of Wilson, um, there are a number of reasons that come to my mind, and um, a lot of those are going to be displayed today. Uh, one of those is uh, that this is a college of opportunity, um, and you will have so many opportunities as a student at Wilson. Um, this is not a place where uh, you will go just to be a number. Uh, you're going to be um, uh, receiving a very personalized education here. And so you're going to have opportunities not just to be the members of organizations on campus, you're going to have the opportunity to lead those organizations. Um, you are going to have the opportunity to network with amazing alums um, of this institution. You're going to get to meet some of them today. And you're going to hear about how a Wilson education can help provide opportunity for you to make a difference in the world and have a meaningful and successful career. Um, secondly, I think I chose Wilson because uh, it is rooted in the liberal arts. And, um, you know, in an era today where so many people, um, politicians and journalists in particular, are uh, disparaging the liberal arts, there's one group uh, of folks out there that are really important who are celebrating the liberal arts, and that's corporate CEOs. Time and time again, when they are asked, what are they looking for in employees? They say they are looking for people who can think critically, analytically, and creatively. They're looking for people who can communicate effectively and efficiently. They're looking for people who live and work honorably. And they're looking for people who can work in small groups um, with people who are not like themselves. And that's exactly the type of education that you're gonna receive at Wilson. And you're gonna be prepared to go out and make a difference in the world and in your career. Um, you don't want to be narrowly prepared uh, to go and do just one job. Um, it is now expected that over the course of your lifetime, you will have 14 different careers. Half of those careers have not even been created yet. Um, and so that's why a liberal arts education is so valuable. So if you would think about when I was going through school, you could not have majored in anything to do with social media because it didn't exist yet. And so... Um, the liberal arts education is preparing you to be nimble, um, to adapt to crazy circumstances like a pandemic and find new paths. Um, and so I think it is by far the best education, but don't take my word for it, ask corporate CEOs, including Google. Um, the, the, the leadership of Google continues to say over and over again that they would rather have someone who is uh, prepared in all of those skills that I just mentioned, rather than having someone who's trained in computer science only, um, because they can teach someone to be a computer programmer, uh, but they can't teach someone to have all of these other soft skills that help people become managers and leaders. And then finally, the reason why I said yes to Wilson are because of the people. Um, it is a remarkable community. Um, our faculty um, are going to be meeting with you. They're going to be hearing about your passions. Um, and they're going to help you find a path forward um, based on what you're interested in doing with your life. They're going to help you explore the curriculum um, and find uh, things that will um, bring you joy and challenge you um, and help you uh, be prepared to be successful. And then there are a team of staff who will be supporting you every step of the way, um, from having a personal uh, librarian um, to um, constantly meet your needs and as far as your research and helping guide you through um, uh, our 
uh, library and all of the different systems that are in place there to having one person that you will go to in our one-stop shop for any questions regarding um, your uh, finances to um, our student development team who are going to be working with you on student activities to athletics um, to um, counseling uh, to uh, health services, you name it. Um, there are tons of people at this institution who want to help see you um, succeed. So finally, um, as I turn it over to uh, the people who can say this much better than I, the products of Wilson College, um, I, I wanna say how excited we are for you to be joining us in the upcoming, um, for those of you who are uh, currently seniors, uh, up this upcoming fall, and for those of you uh, beyond in the upcoming years. Um, you will soon learn that Wilson is a place where we celebrate pride. Um, I like to say that we are one Wilson and um, there's not a day that I don't go by without my Wilson blue, uh, the lapel pin on my, uh, uh, on me uh, and on my coat. Um, we ooze pride for this institution and we are going to be excited to celebrate and welcome you uh, when you arrive on campus. So thank you for being with us today and I'm so delighted that you're going to get to meet uh, some of the people who represent Wilson the very best, our alumni and alumni. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Mike. All right. Thank you, Dr. Puget. Um, and of course, before we get started uh, and get into the meat of the program, just a couple of housekeeping notes and I would absolutely be remiss um, not to thank, of course, um, two people that you can see on the call right now, uh, and if they would like to wave, uh, Mary Beth Farmer-Laurie and uh, Camila Raleigh from our Institutional Advancement Office and Alumni Relations. Um, this session absolutely would not have happened without them, um, so I want to just do a big thank you, of course, to the two of them um, for helping us put this together. And, you know, for admissions, I know we have been, you know, working with you, um, you know, if you're looking at Fall 20 for the past couple of months, um, you know, those of you who, of course, we're just getting to know for fall 21 and fall 22, you know, you've heard us talk a lot about that, that collaborative spirit and the community of Wilson. And, you know, I hope some of that comes through today. And I realize you have heard from us for a very long time. And this is the day where we want to hand this over and let our students talk. And you've heard from current students already. You've heard from staff. You've heard from faculty. Um, but as Dr. Fugit said, here, here's the product of Wilson. You know, here are six um, students who, of course, have gone through the experience, who are out there in the world, and, you know, they've come back to tell you a little bit about what made Wilson special to them. Um, and I absolutely want to thank every single one of them for being here. Um, this is a crazy time, and the fact that they were willing to carve out that hour, I cannot thank you enough for it. Um, and before we get started, I at least want to point out um, the chat function uh, you can send any questions that you have uh, for the presenters. I will relay those once you get to the Q&A after uh, the presentation. So if you have any questions whatsoever for the presenters, send them uh, by chat through me and we'll kind of go from there. But uh, without further ado, I will throw this to, of course, the people who are you are actually here to hear from instead of me. Um, and we'll start off with uh, Caitlin Wingard, a graduate of 2016. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Um, my name is, is Caitlin, I graduated in 2016. Um, I was a, a double major, so I um, had a degree in early childhood education in Spanish, and then I had a minor in math. Um, I grew up close to Wilson, I grew up in Gettysburg, PA, um, just about 30 minutes from campus. And so um, when it was junior, senior year, and it was time to start looking at colleges, I knew that I wanted to look fairly um, local in the area that I grew up. And so I started um, just doing a little bit of research and I found Wilson. I actually had been to Wilson when I was younger for a softball clinic. Um, so it's kind of amazing how, how life happens. Um, but I, so Wilson was my first visit and my family and I went um, and I, after I was done, I told my family, I said, this is where I'm going to go. I don't have to look anymore. And this is what I wanna do and where I wanna be. And right away, I was just amazed and thankful for the relationships. Um, I, my tour guide um, that I met or that I had was just, she was wonderful and became one of my really close friends quickly during my time there. Um, I also um, got to meet professors on that visit. And I just um, kind of as the president and Michael said, I just um, admired the community at Wilson and wanted to be part of it. Um, you're not just, you know, a number in an auditorium or a number in a classroom. 
but the professors know your name, they know your family, they know your interests, they know, you know, what challenges you might be facing, and they work with you to, to overcome them. So I just felt that connection right from the start. Um, during my time at Wilson, I had the opportunity to be involved in athletics. Um, so I was part of the softball team for four years. Um, I also participated a little bit in um, cross country and basketball during my time and absolutely loved it. Um, I also was involved in various clubs um, and student organizations, um, such as being a member of the, um, being the senior class president and a member of one of the programs called the Current Scholarship Program, which is where we have to get um, 260 volunteer hours every year. Um, and all of those experiences definitely shaped me into the person I am today. I know that when I went to Wilson and when I started, I was not a, a public speaker at all. I was not comfortable whatsoever. And, um, and I found quickly that, you know, my professors and the Wilson community, they embrace that and they push you out of your comfort zone and they challenge you. And I'm just so grateful for those opportunities. Um, a little bit about me and where I am currently. So I am a first grade teacher in Gettysburg, PA. Um, I actually teach in the same first grade classroom that I was in, which is pretty amazing. Um, and it's, it's neat to be on the teacher side instead of the student side now. Um, so I'm getting ready to finish my fourth year there. And whenever it's, you know, when I think about Wilson and how much Wilson is a part of me and it's still part of me today, you know, even though I graduated and walked across the stage, I still use the skills. I still, you know, communicate with professors and friends. Um, and I still feel kind of the Wilson effect even four years later. Um, so I'm just so grateful for that opportunity. Um, I know that when I interviewed for my teaching position, um, right away the, the um, superintendent and those in the interview were really curious about a liberal arts um, education and what other sorts of classes I had taken. They were interested in the fact that I was able to be involved in athletics and different um, clubs and organizations. And so they really asked me, you know, how can you use those experiences in the, in the first grade classroom? And so I just, I'm just forever just so grateful for the opportunities that I had and, um, and just how they kind of shape, uh, you know, the work in the classroom today. Um, last year, I, um, I graduated with my master's and when I was cons looking at different programs, I contacted my, one of my Wilson professors and I said, I'm looking at this type of program, what do you think? And she already had contact information for me. And that was a few, you know, after I had already graduated. So as you can see, the relationships that you build in the community that you build, you're forever a part of Wilson, even after you graduate. Um, one of my, Michael asked us to talk about maybe like a single moment or something um, that I will forever, you know, remember during my time at Wilson. Um, one of my experiences was um, being able to study abroad. So um, I, when I started at Wilson, I, I had my mindset on elementary education and um, I was considering maybe Spanish. I absolutely love taking Spanish classes in high school. And I had this idea, I said, I'd really, you know, like to pursue a minor or maybe a major in Spanish too. You know, how is this gonna work with student teaching? And the professors were all on board and they were just so excited to make it fit and make it work with, with the, you know, the rigorous schedule. Um, and so I had the opportunity to um, go to Costa Rica. I took two classes during my time there and then I extended my stay and was involved in a service learning program. And so I worked in a children's orphanage um, and I worked with, um, there were nine little babies in the house that I was in. They were ages, um, they were newborn through two years old. And it was just the most, I mean, just so many different emotions just thinking about it. Honestly, there's not a day that doesn't go by that you don't think about the kids and, and you reflect on that experience and just how much it is, you know, kind of a part of me. And, I'm just so grateful, um, and that's one of many experiences at Wilson that, you know, that I carry through me now as an alum um, and as a teacher. So I'll be excited, you know, to answer your questions then, but, but welcome, and we're so excited to be talking with you today. All right, thank you, Caitlin. Um, and next up, we have Karis Daniel, a graduate of, I believe, December 2018, if I'm, if I'm right on that. 
Um, yeah. I know she's helped us with a number of things in the past, and I also have to highlight, and I apologize, I'm stealing your thunder on this one. Uh, she's also nice enough to be joining us at 10 o'clock at night, uh, <laughs> which I will have her explain uh, momentarily. So take it away, Karis. Right. Hi, everyone. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here, even virtually. And I'm so pleased that you guys are really considering making Wilson um, a part of your future. I did graduate in 2018 in December, like Mike said, um, with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. And now I am about halfway through a two-year master's program at the University of Cape Town in South Africa, which is why it's 10 p.m. <laughs> and I'm studying ornithology and I'm modeling bird distributions. Um, so Mike gave us a series of sort of broad prompts to work through and my interpretation of that was just to share my Wilson journey with you guys. So I'd really like to do that if I can and um, hopefully some of it or all of it or maybe none of it will resonate with you um, and if not that's cool too. Um, so my journey at Wilson really was not um, a straightforward one. I was very shy. I still am, really. And I originally wanted to study EFT and ended up changing to biology in my sophomore year after taking um, two gen bio courses with Dr. Harriger and Dr. Engel and just completely falling in love with the subject. So I was studying biology, um, but I didn't really know what to specialize in within that field until I took my first ecology course. And um, I can vividly remember walking up to my professor at the end of our first lecture on behavioral ecology and I was just shaking with nervousness and I told her I want to do this for the rest of my life and for me um, that was really the start of, of being brave and I think over the next um, two and a half years that I was there Wilson really allowed me to grow and to to be brave in um, in more ways than I could ever have imagined. So some of you may already know that um, a few of the faculty members at Wilson worked really, really hard in the past few years to develop a partnership between Wilson and the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute in Virginia um, for students to live at the research center there and to just learn um, conservation hands on. So my junior year in 2017, I was able to participate in one of those programs and um, I studied wildlife ecology and conservation there, along with one of my best friends from Wilson, Danielle Zona. Um, and the community there was really, really life-changing for me, especially in um, how much the professionals and the staff and the other students even um, saw potential in me where I didn't. Um, so it was a really special time. That's where I conducted my first um, supervised research project, which eventually became my honors research at Wilson. Um, I was able to work with incredible scientists, um, was studying with like-minded people, and my fellow students from there are um, still some of my closest friends to this day. Um, obviously, though, that's not on Wilson's campus. And after my brave awakening, shall we call it, in ecology class in 2016, um, I became much more involved in student life at Wilson as well. Um, so I applied to be an RA, a resident assistant, and I worked in that capacity for uh, nearly three years, two and a half years, I think. And while it is that teach you some valuable life skills, I still use um, the community building, the, the conflict resolution, the leadership, the crisis intervention skills in life today, three or four years down the road. Um, and the student life and student development teams at Wilson are just remarkable. Um, they served as mentors and support systems for us when we were facing some really challenging stuff. Um, and they still do today. There's still people that I would reach out to with questions. Um, and the same applies to the skills that I gained from classes because the faculty at Wilson, like Caitlin said, are amazing. They're just some of the most passionate and invested people that I've ever had the privilege of learning from. Um, and really, regardless of whether my courses were actually relevant to my science degree. I think I can honestly say that I never had a negative experience in a Wilson classroom. <laughs> and I know that might not be true for everyone, but it definitely was for me. Um, I even added a minor in Latin because I enjoyed the professor so much. So I really do, I do believe that the, the concepts and um, the theory from the classes at Wilson, as well as the research skills from the Smithsonian did equip me for where I am now. Um, but most of all, really just those relationships with, with faculty, with staff, with my friends, um, just through what they taught me and what they've shared with me. Um, so yeah, Wilson 
had some of the most formative, um, some of the most significant moments and people in my life. And I'm really just uh, endlessly thankful for my time there. And I don't know if this is allowed, I probably should have run it by mic, but if anyone has questions after about student life or the Smithsonian or finding your niche in studies, I'm so happy to respond to emails because I'm definitely that person who cannot think of questions on the spot and then two hours later it's like, I should have said that. So please feel free to reach out. Maybe we can circulate emails after. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. And, and no, that is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, it's something, if, of course, if you have questions, um, yeah, if anybody wants to reach out to me, I'm, I'm happy as long as, of course, it's okay with you, yeah, to share that email address and, and get you connected. Because, you know, as I said, I know admissions has been here to answer questions, but, you know, again, getting that information directly from students and people who have lived the experience, um, you know, that's invaluable. So, yeah, no, thank you for doing that. Um, and next up is Danielle Miller, uh, 2016 graduate. Um, Take it away, Danielle. Great. Thanks, Michael. And thank you everyone for having me here today. And I'm excited to be here with you all. So I'm Danielle Miller. Um, I graduated with the class of 2016. And right now I'm living and working in the Washington DC metro area. My current job is actually in the development department at uh, Conservation International, which is an environmental nonprofit that really focuses on protecting the natural places that sustain life around the world. And I previously, before stepping into this role at Conservation International, worked at a smaller nonprofit called Chesapeake Climate Action Network um, that focused on climate change advocacy in the DMV region. So I graduated from Wilson with my bachelor's in environmental science and a minor in communications. And then I went on to pursue my master's degree in environmental law and policy from Vermont Law School as part of the three plus one program that Wilson and BLS had been piloting that year. Um, and admittedly, that wasn't really part of my plan when I first got to Wilson, um, but it really turned out to be you know, the best experience that I could have ever imagined. So just to rewind things a bit to kind of lay out this story of how I got there. Um, I was originally drawn to Wilson because of the equestrian program. I really wanted to be able to ride while I was at school. And when I first got to school, I planned on doing a dual major in equine journalism and environmental science. And those are two majors, it turns out, that have almost no classes in common. <laughs> um, but what was amazing at that point is that, you know, my professors didn't discourage me from still following that path because I really, really wanted to do that. And they helped me to kind of envision what it would take to graduate in four years with those two very different majors and map out a plan. So what ended up happening from there is that, you know, as time went on within my first semester, I started to notice that my interests were falling more squarely in the environmental studies camp. And at that point, I talked to my advisor and he had been working on this partnership with Vermont Law School and he pitched it to me and, you know, talked to me about my options and career paths with taking on, you know, an environmental policy degree on top of my environmental science degree. And, you know, I decided to go for it and you know at that point I had also you know already taken some classes that related to the journalism major so that's how I landed with you know the minor in communications because I wanted to take advantage of the courses that I had already done and I have to say that has turned out to be you know incredibly helpful in my current line of work and I think was you know definitely one of the smart decisions that my professors at the time helped me work out but I think, you know, the key takeaway from my experience is that you might come to school with some ideas of what you expect your future to look like and inevitably that might change and that's okay. And what's really important is having, you know, people in your court that are going to be there to help you navigate it. And so when I look back, it's abundantly clear to me that, you know, things didn't just happen by chance while I was at Wilson. 
but because I had the close support and the one-on-one -on -one coaching and you know guidance of the professors that I was working with and I really feel that that is something that's pretty unique and special about Wilson um, and you know aside from the pure academics something else that I really loved about my time was you know, there's no lack of opportunities to try new things. So I really tried to take advantage of that as much as possible when I was at Wilson. And just to name a few highlights, I definitely can't get into everything that I loved. But, um, you know, I did end up being able to ride on the hunt seat and eventing equestrian teams. And that was, you know, something that was important to me as I mentioned earlier, because I was drawn to the school originally because of the equestrian program and because there are stables right on campus, which is also something that's pretty unique to Wilson. Um, not a lot of other schools actually have the stables right on campus. Um, but I also, as some other folks have mentioned, got to study abroad. So I went to Belize um, to study tropical ecology over a winter term. And then I also got to go to China over a summer term both of which were just life-changing experiences. And, you know, it's the sort of thing that I don't think I go a week without thinking about just how amazing those experiences were and just like reflecting on the powerful memories I have from being able to study abroad. And um, just a couple other things. Um, during my entire time at Wilson, I did a work study job at the Fulton Farm. And that is still a place I hold near and dear to me so much so that I even considered having my wedding at Fulton Farm because I just love it that much. Um, and honestly, I could go on, but I'll just wrap up and say, you know, I think your college experience really is what you make of it, but it helps to be somewhere where the opportunities are endless and where the community is tight knit and committed to helping you succeed. And that's something I personally found at Wilson and very grateful for that and you know i'm also happy to you know be a resource and answer emails um because i really like am committed to making sure that you know future generations of wilson graduates are also able to succeed and make the most out of their experience so thank you everyone all right thank you danielle um, and now, next up, uh, we have Ian Irvin, a 2012 graduate, which I will say looking at the dates around here means that he experienced a slightly different Wilson than uh, most of the others on this call. Um, but I will, of course, let him explain about his time at Wilson. Uh, Ian, go ahead. Thank you, Michael. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Just uh, really excited that you all are considering Wilson College, and, and uh, hopefully you're learning a lot through this, this Zoom meeting. Uh, I think like as Kara said, if you have any questions, I'm also one that that uh, can't come up with questions immediately on the spot. So if you if you have questions in the next few hours, few days, uh, uh, you're more than welcome to contact me and I'll, I'll try to answer them uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, I, I get, it looks like I'm the oldest alumni here. And, and what Michael was mentioning was I, I was at Wilson College during a different, very different time when it was still an all women's college. Uh, so uh, I came in as an adult degree student. Uh, I served six years in the military first and then uh, came to Wilson with already my associate's degree. Uh, I'm originally from Shippensburg, so I was looking at uh, schools in the area. And, and one of the things that uh, Wilson very distinctly stood out was the way it treated me as an individual. Uh, when, I, when I toured other colleges, uh, it, it felt like it just another person that, that, that uh, people touring the college with admissions. I was just another person. I was just another number. Uh, I, I, I didn't get that personal touch. And with Wilson, it was very much different. They actually treated me like an individual. Uh, they treated me like an adult. Uh, some schools were like, hey, we're going to schedule out everything for you for the first year. You know, I was 24, 25 years old. I was in the military. I was not okay with that. Uh, and Wilson College is, was, was had a very different treatment of me. They, they, they worked with my schedule, my work schedule, uh, my personal life, and, and we were able to, to, to set a schedule up for, for, uh, uh, for me uh, uh, when I came to Wilson College. Uh, one of the things that, another thing I really loved about Wilson College was the very small class size. Uh, I think my smallest class was three, 
and my largest class was I think 2530. And, and, and with a lot of big colleges, you might be in a class of several hundred individuals. And, and one reason I loved the small class sizes was that uh, when I entered my professional life, uh, it was very beneficial because of the working groups that I'm on, they're usually around a dozen people. So, so I could engage in those discussions very much similar to the way uh, our, our discussions at Wilson College were. Uh, and another benefit of, of the small class sizes was, was the professor was able to really gear the, the, the speed of the classes to the students. So if there was, if there was something that was not clicking for most of us, I, I think of like economics class. Uh, there was just some things that were not clicking for, for me and a lot of the other, a, a lot of my colleagues. And so the professor was able to slow down the pace uh, and, and really geared his teaching style to, to how the class was, was receiving the information and learning. But then when, when we were, you know, were on, on, on point and picking up things very easily, we could speed up. So, so that was one of the benefits of, of, uh, of, of Wilson College, the small class size in, in addition to the way it treated. Uh, like, like the president said, the, the liberal arts education was, is, is valuable. Uh, I, I majored in international studies. Uh, I have minors in history, poli-sci, and peace and conflict resolution. I do nothing with my international studies degree. Uh, I, I eventually went to law school, and I am currently an attorney at the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, so a lot of science, a lot of nuclear science. I took maybe one science class at Wilson. Uh, but needless to say, the critical thinking skills uh, helped me jump into the deep end of the swimming pool really, really quickly. Uh, it, it, within a couple months, I, I felt like I knew what I was talking about uh, at work, despite not knowing what an atom was or just knowing what some of the basic elements were, just because of those critical thinking skills that, that, that were developed at Wilson. And then another thing is, I would say, the communication. Uh, I, I, I was really pushed by uh, professors in my writing style. I thought I thought I was coming into Wilson as a very good writer. Uh, there was definitely a lot of room for improvement, and, and the professors pointed those out. And, and, and as an attorney, it, it one of my one of the major things I do is communication, and so it helped my writing style with with writing letters to members of the public. Uh, with writing letters to, to the staff members, with writing letters to or, or correspondence with other agencies. Uh, with with uh, just earlier this week, I was drafting letters for for some congressional members for for both the Senate and Congress, uh, even the president's office. Uh, things like that. It really helped in my communication. Uh, I had to think if it, it's been eight years since I've been at Wilson. So I had to, I had to dust off some memories of, of some of the more memorable experiences that I had there. Uh, but I'll, I'll mention that uh, Dr. Hummer, who is uh, one of the poly, political science professors there, took us to oral arguments at the Supreme Court uh, my senior year there. And that was, it was, well, you had to wake up like at three, four in the morning just so you could get a spot there. So, so a lot of Starbucks coffee was, was drinking what we, we drunk while we were standing in line before the Supreme Court. But, but, uh, uh, I really enjoyed oral arguments. And, and I feel like I have to mention this for Mary Beth's sake. Uh, I actually met my wife at Wilson college. Uh, we met in, in one of the economics classes. Uh, so, so I met my wife there. We actually got married at Wilson College in 2015. So it was where we got married in, uh, in Laird and we had a reception in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the main dining hall. And we actually went back and, and got some, some of her photos taken in the very spot that we first met, uh, for, for a wedding. So, so not directly related to our Wilson, my Wilson experience there in college, but, but, but definitely led to, led to those things. Uh, yeah, so, so again, just, I, I'm glad that you all are considering Wilson College, and, and like I said, if, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you, and, and that, and honestly, that is fantastic. I actually, yeah, I didn't know that, um, and no, that is, that, that is absolutely relevant to your Wilson experience. I gotta say, I assume it made things here a little bit better, right? I mean, nobody's unhappy in that situation, so. Right, right, no one's unhappy. Yeah. Living the life.
All right. So next up, um, we have a 2019 graduate uh, with us, uh, Katie Shank. Hi, guys. I'm Katie. Um, I graduated in 2019 with a degree in communications, and I'm currently pursuing a master's of healthcare administration at Wilson. I'm in my ninth class, so I have one more to go in the fall, which I'm really excited about. Um, and I currently work at the alumni house directly on campus, so I got to stay close, close to school. Um, I'm originally from Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, and when I graduated high school, I was accepted into 23 different colleges, and Wilson was not at the top of my list, um, but I'm happy to say that it definitely um, became the top of my list, and I went there. Um, so there's many reasons uh, that I loved Wilson. So first, Wilson has a dedicated faculty and staff. So by the time you start with the admissions to the time that you end uh, Wilson, there's always people in your corner that are rooting for your success. Um, without um, my core network of people, I definitely wouldn't have made it in college. But having that corner uh, to help me and just root me on throughout my uh, two and a half years that I did my uh, bachelor's degree was definitely um, a saving grace for me. Um, I also agree with Caitlin at Wilson, you're not just like a number in a classroom, like there's like a name to your face, um, name to face recognition. And I really feel like having that close knit community definitely helped me. Um, small class sizes, like Ian said, I think my smallest class was four, my largest class was 20. So definitely having that like ongoing connection and not being just like a face in a room was helpful. Um, I would say my singular experience, I guess I would have two. So I was lucky enough to travel abar abroad with Wilson twice. So I went to the Dominican Republic on the medical Spanish mission trips. And they're definitely an eye-opening experience, uh, not only being able to speak Spanish in a Spanish speaking country, but also just like the service learning and being able to connect with people, um, definitely going as strangers, but then coming back as friends with 20 people that I never met at Wilson, but meeting them during the trip. So definitely Wilson helped me with my confidence. So when I first came, I was really timid. I really didn't know what I was doing in college. And then when I came out of college, um, I became really active and just really grateful for my whole entire experience at Wilson. Fantastic, Katie, thank you. Um, and last, but certainly not least, um, is someone who, of course, I know has, uh, you know, helped us many, many times over the years. And I love the fact, of course, that many of you on this call helped us out with admissions panels while you were students. And it turns out once you graduate, you can't get away, which is nice. I like that. Um, but next, we have another 2019 graduate, uh, Keon Adams. Thank you. Well, I'm the last one, so I feel like there's nothing else to say. Just joke. There's more. Um, so I'm Keon Adams. I uh, graduated 19. I have a bachelor's in exercise and sports science with a minor in biology. Uh, I was a little different case in the beginning of my Wilson career. I was a transfer actually. I started out at a state college, Frostburg State University, and it was massive compared to Wilson or just it was massive to me in general. Uh, and I really felt like I was a number there. I really didn't have the college experience that I wanted to. And I wanted to play basketball as well. I'm an athlete. So I decided to try to find other places to uh, go. So my parents helped me out and were like, hey, what about Wilson College? They contacted you to play basketball. And all that. I'm like, okay, I'll take a visit. That one visit turned into two more visits. That other three visits turned into like a couple overnights. And I basically started living there while I was going to a university and it was great. Um, so I ended up coming after that year. And I, just like Caitlin said, I was involved in the current scholar thing where you had to volunteer for 260 hours. And I had that all four years of Wilson. And that really kind of connected me to not only the community, but it commuted, or connected me to the staff, to the president, to the rest of uh, like, students at the school as well. I uh, helped make a stick sculpture that the president helped with, a bunch of my faculty and staff helped me with. Um, I'm helping out, I helped out with uh, student athletes as well. I was a student orientation leader as well. So that's when you first get on campus, you have a full week of trying to get to know all of your fellow freshmen and some upperclassmen as well to help you uh, get acclimated, I guess you say, to the school and I think straight off of that week of student orientation, that really grips you into there and 
you kind of understand what you're getting into when you get Wilson. And it's something that you don't want to go away from at all because you really understand that these are the people that you're going to be with for, well, in addition to all the other uh, upper class and stuff, the people that you're going to be with for your four years. And you really get connected with them, with the different groups that you have. And it's just like everybody has a group that they belong to, honestly. Like no matter what, you find somebody or an entire group of people that you will be able to bond with, you'll find in your classes, and you'll be like, oh, you're majoring in this too? Oh, okay, cool, let's hang out afterwards, let's get coffee, let's do something like that. And you'll just automatically start hanging out with everybody and connecting with all of these other people. I actually found my best friend, he lives in New Jersey, but we're working it out, and I still talk to him every single day, I found my best friend there. Um, like I said, I played basketball as well. And as a student athlete, a D3 student athlete, you really have to juggle um, basically athletics and academics. And Wilson really helps you with that. Like everybody else said that uh, your professors are really connected with you. So if you have a class size of about 10 people with you, your presence is definitely known. And if you miss that class, then they're definitely going to email you or talk to you like, hey, why don't you show up? Are you okay? Like they genuinely care about you and want to know your well-being and are thinking about your future at every turn. Even if you miss one class, you're thinking about how that could affect you, maybe an impossible test that you missed that information or something like that. So they really are connected with you from the beginning to the end. And that end really hasn't appeared to me because I, I've been in contact with all of my professors still that I've had. I have a couple of them on social media and I post a picture and they comment. It's really a great community that you find at Wilson. Um, after Wilson, after I graduated, I went straight to get my graduate degree. I was in London, the University of East London, to pursue my graduate degree uh, in exercise sports science again with uh, sports psychology as well. And because this whole situation came down, I am currently back in the States, which I'm fine with, but London was pretty great as well. So that's like an idea of really where you can go from a Wilson education. You can literally go across the pond and find opportunities anywhere. Uh, it's really limitless and it's about of how much you kind of apply yourself during all those four years, because there are a lot of people that you can stay connected with to get you to all these different places. Like all of us here, I'm pretty sure our connections that you can have because we've all been around the world, it seems like, and you could use us as connections to help you get to wherever you want. Uh, and I'd say my favorite experience has to do with basketball, of course. So we got into, uh, we got into our final four playoff run and we got a home game and you could really see the community uh, feel of the entire school because you had, there's Menno Haven, I don't know if you guys have been on campus, but there's Menno Haven, like right next door to our field house. And we had a section for uh, members of Menno Haven that could come to our game. We had people from Chambersburg High School come to our game. We had the rest of the community come to the game. Of course, students and faculty and all that. And it was, so jam-packed that it was a fire hazard almost to get into that game. And that really felt amazing. And you see the support that you have at this school, not only in athletics, but just in life. Like these people really genuinely care about you and want you to succeed. Uh, I don't know if there's any more, but that's my bit. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Keon. And of course, thank everyone. Um, no, it's funny. I want to touch on something because um, I know it was one of the questions that we got and I think we covered it pretty well already. Um, but, you know, one of the things that you're right, Keon, that I, I kind of took away from everything that, that I heard here, which is, you know, how much of your experience was outside of the classroom, that how much of it was global and how much that impacted, you know, what all of you were doing at this point. Um, and, you know, when I always talk about the transformative power of, of, of higher ed, you know, it, it, it's funny, that's the kind of thing that I think about, those ex the things that you start your college career not even realizing that that's something that's going to be a part of it, but realizing you take that one leap and do it, and it literally can change the course of the rest of your life. Um, and I know, you know, there was a question on here about study abroad, and I realized, I think we covered that 
you know, pretty well up to this point. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it's funny hearing some of these things, even as a staff member, somebody who sees the students every day, um, and, you know, realizing how much of that happens even outside of the classroom or even not on campus. But getting into questions here, um, and looking at this, I remind everybody, uh, chat function is open, so please continue to send your questions. Um, and if you have any follow-up, we'll uh, send out a quick follow-up email to everybody um, tomorrow. So if you do have follow-up questions, as it has come up a number of times, I have done enough panels that you write, you will leave and immediately you're going to be like, I should have asked that. Um, you will definitely give you ways to follow up on some of those. Um, but the first question that we have, and this is something as we talked about majors, um, you know, I'm kind of interested in too. You know, a lot of students come into Wilson not quite knowing what they want to do yet. Um, so any of you who, you know, maybe started off in that position, didn't quite know what you want to do right away, um, you know, how did, how did you figure that out? You know, what advice would you give to somebody who at this point is sitting here, you know, choosing a school, but isn't totally sure what they actually want to major in yet? And obviously, I'm opening that up to the group at this point, so... I can jump in. Um, so I spoke about this a little bit, but when I came to Wilson, I, I actually had a feeling of what I wanted to do, but I picked two majors that were pretty different. So I think that kind of speaks to also, there was this element of, I wasn't really sure about what path I wanted to be on. So I think what was so helpful for me was in that first semester, you know, not only just being in my classes, but getting to know my professors and getting to know some of the things that I was most interested in, just by talking to people, talking to my other classmates, and, you know, really having that one-on-one -on -one time with professors to sit down and think about, well, this is what I could do if I choose this major. And if I do decide to do these dual majors, how will I make that work after I get out of school? Um, so, <laughs> Even though I did come in with this idea of like, I wanted these two majors, I, <laughs> I think at the same time, it was really, I was still trying to figure it all out. And what was, you know, the monumental thing for me was just, you know, being on campus, you know, being involved in activities that were going on and, you know, going to talks and like hearing other people's experiences. That was what really helped me to be able to narrow it down and then decide, you know, and really focus on what I wanted out of my education. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. So moving on, I realized some of these will kind of do, I, I guess I'll call it a lightning round sort of, of thing, because we actually have, looks like a couple of ones that I think we can do, you know, sort of in a row. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, this is for the group. Um, obviously, we can't show anybody campus right now. So that is unfortunate and why, of course, we are meeting this way instead of on campus. Um, and I know some of you highlighted it as you went, but one of the questions that we got is, what, what was your favorite place on campus? the library so when i started my freshman year i lived in the library no joke i think the library was just a great resource and like they said earlier like you have your personal librarian there um tons of technology to use and tons of resources so i invested myself in the library all the time my favorite spot on campus i'm hectic outdoors person so my favorite spot was always by the the creek the con there's just beautiful spots to walk there there's a trail that runs behind campus that i've probably walked like 300 times and it's just such a beautiful peaceful way to start or to end the day so definitely very nature oriented campus i would say the lengthest green was awesome for me i'll say that to, that's the least i could say about that um it's smack in the middle of campus. And I always had a huge group of people that were extroverts just like me. And we played catch outside, we played spike ball outside. And I later figured out in my junior year that kind of like underneath the post, there was a uh, outlet so I could bring speakers out and bring some more life out there a little bit. And that brought everybody outside. And it really showed the community once again that like people were looking outside of their dorm rooms like, can I come out and hang out with you guys? Yeah, come on, come on down, come on down. It's just, it's so nice out there. It's just, especially when you get a really nice day, everybody's searching for 
a way to get outside, honestly. So just show the opportunities and you make a lot of friends and have more opportunities to do things. I agree with Keon. My favorite place was also on the Lenfest Green area. Um, there are these Adirondack chairs there and I used to spend hours um, with my laptop just getting things done and it was just so nice and peaceful and it was, you know, technology is great that you can take yourself outside and still get your schoolwork done. So I would definitely agree with Keon. Yeah, so for me, I already kind of touched on this, but I really loved Fulton Farm and I worked up there too, but there's also this path that like curves up around the farm and goes up to the hill and then you can run back down. I used to love running on that path um, just to like get away. So that was great. But I also just love spending time at the stables too. Um, so those were my top two favorite places. I'll, I'll, I'll third uh, Caitlin and Keon, the green and some of those chairs, uh, especially when it's nice out, you could do some reading. Uh, but it was also a point where I really didn't want to do reading. I just wanted to interact with people just walking by with my friends. So that was a perfect excuse uh, to do that. Uh, but if, if, if I had to, to batten down the hatches and actually do some work, uh, I, would, I, I, I found this uh, little place in the Science Center on the back side where no one usually walked past except a professor, except the professors that had offices back there. So uh, it was usually a good place to batten down the hatches and, 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 and go into what some people talked about is, is if I was there a couple hours, the professors would check in on me and making sure that I was getting, getting food, uh, getting water, making sure that I was okay if, if I'm in the midst of writing a paper. Nice, thank you. And along that line, um, and I'm kind of looking here, trying to think how to phrase this. Um, we talked about the value, of course, of you know the, the non-major courses and sort of what they bring to the experience. Um, so the next question is, favorite non-major related class? You know, what, what did you take that maybe you weren't even expecting was something that you would enjoy? Um, you know, for those of them that are gonna be, of course, choosing classes sometime in the future, what do you recommend? I took a photography class and it's amazing. And I have a camera now because of that photography class. Even though uh, the photography class that I took, you had to develop your pictures. You, there was a, what was that dark room, I guess they call it. And uh, you had to make your pictures, like develop your pictures and stuff. I took the easy route and have a digital camera now with a bunch of different settings and all that. So it's easier, but I definitely took a lot from that photography class and I enjoyed it a lot and it kind of, tied me or brought me into a whole different world in a way with, I was a big city boy. I live across the street from railroad tracks. So I don't really get to see that much nature because of all of that. And Chambersburg is completely different than where I'm from. So I took in all of that and photography brought me outdoors more. And now I love hiking so much and take my uh, camera everywhere because of it. So that was great then. Awesome. All right. I think for me, um, I really enjoyed my Spanish classes actually. And it wasn't necessarily unexpected, but the courses weren't necessarily related to my major. And I just loved those classes. And it actually made me wish like toward the end of my time at Wilson that I could have, you know, minored in Spanish, but because of the three plus one program that I was in, I wasn't able to do that, but I did love the few Spanish courses that I took. All right. um, I took um, an environmental writing, um, environmental literature course. And it was something completely different, but um, kind of like Keon said, I just love being outside and, you know, involved in, in nature. And I just love that class. I love the text that we had to read and the writing um, was just relevant. And it was, it was a creative writing course. So there was a lot of, you know, poetry involved and it was just something completely different. Um, but sometimes that's enjoyable. You know, you get, you have those other outlets that you never thought you would enjoy and and then you come to really to really like them so that was one of my favorite courses i think similar to what caitlin just said um i took a few 
religion and philosophy courses as well, sort of to supplement all of the science that I was doing. And I really enjoyed having that balance and having classes that were based on discussion and rather than just the research aspect. So it really, it activates a different part of your brain and you get to just engage in dialogue and try new things. And it's quite fun. It's fun to try something new. And we actually did have a follow-up to that um, that I have to admit, I'm not going to ask, which was favorite faculty member, but I have to admit, we're not, because that's going to get us in trouble, so we're not doing that one. Um, so yeah, that, that one goes down a road where it's like, they're all fantastic, but yeah, then people feel special or slighted if you don't mention them. So, you know, I know, um, you know, that's something, and I, I will say, before we get into the final question, um, I'm actually sort of, I, I guess, a surprise alumni on this call myself. Um, you know, I, I will echo some of what was said about the classroom experience, you know, as somebody who did their master's here. Um, you know, I sat in the same classrooms as graduates, as undergraduates, and, you know, I saw firsthand the relationships that people have with the faculty members, that, you know, they care how, how, how you're doing, they care how you succeed. If you, as somebody said, don't show up to class, they're going to follow up and make sure that everything's okay if you don't you know, get to class. Um, and I remember, I think, Ian, you were the one that said it. Um, that was the one thing that I have to admit, they push you. Um, they push you in ways that you need to be pushed. Because I remember, no matter how good of a writer I thought I was coming into that program, I found out very quickly I was not. Um, as And it was good. I, I learned skills, you know, that I needed to succeed, not just, you know, in the classroom, but even in my job. Um, and really push me to be a better writer and expect more from myself and not just rest on that, oh yeah, I'm pretty good at this and go, no, why, why do you need these skills? Um, and you know, that's something that as I do this job, as I work in admissions, um, you know, I'm glad I had that experience because I saw some of that, that same thing that our students go through. But final question, um, cause I know we're a little bit over our time here. So. You guys all have graduated from Wilson. You were out there in the world. And we're, of course, talking to a number of people here who are starting in fall 20, but even looking at fall 21 and beyond, as people who have lived this experience and you know, are now out there in the world, what is the one piece of advice you would give to anybody entering college for making the most of their experience? Which I know that is a big question, but I, I liked it enough that I was like, I'm gonna save that one for the end. Um, so again, whatever order, you know, you guys want to jump in, if you have something, go for it. Um, don't be afraid to take opportunities. So I think a lot of times, like there's so many opportunities on campus, uh, you're overwhelmed. And so don't be afraid to like jump in and just like try something new. Um, similarly, I completely agree with that. Um, I don't know if anyone on this call is familiar with like theater, but in improv, they always say like, always say yes. And I think that's a good rule of thumb when it comes to opportunities that present themselves in college and especially at Wilson. When I look back at my experiences and you know what I got to do, I never would have thought in my first year that I would have done any of those things. For example, working at Fulton Farm. I never would have guessed that I would have done that and loved it, but I did. And same goes for, you know, studying abroad, going to Belize, going to China. Those are two places when I went to college, I wanted to study abroad, but I didn't think I would ever, you know, go to Belize and go to China. So, you know, just being able to say yes to the opportunities as they come, even if you're not sure, you know, and you, even if you haven't planned for them, um, I think that's really important. I feel like mine is very similar um, to, to Danielle and Katie, but um, if, if you, you know, have an inkling of a thought that you might like to try a club, or you might like to pursue this minor, or you might like to take an environmental lit course that has nothing to do with the major that you think you're going down, um, I would say don't be afraid. Um, and certainly reach out to those professors and the staff members and, um, you know, those who, who are there for that reason. Um, you know, they're there for every part of you um, as a student, as a person, as a, you know, former 
alum. And so don't be afraid to, to reach out. I know I, I had my eyes set solely on education and nothing, another major, another minor just didn't, didn't seem right. I was kind of down this, this one vision. Um, but then the more you, you're kind of curious. And I think if you have that curiosity and you want to learn more then um, it doesn't hurt to ask and it doesn't hurt to, um, to reach out and just, you know, everyone is more than welcome to lend a hand. Um, so, so uh, don't be afraid to, to reach out in that way. I think I'm definitely seeing a theme in our answers, but <laughs> something similar. Um, try something that scares you a little bit. It doesn't have to be hectic, but I know I was definitely afraid of going into a, a pure science when I first came to Wilson, and it took me about a year to realize that I really, really loved it, and the challenge was completely worth it. And the faculty members will help you through that as well. And I mean, they've seen so many students go through that process of being intimidated by a subject and not really knowing how to handle it or deal with it. But I mean, just try it, give it a shot. It might scare you, it might be really, really hard, but you might also love it. So just be open to those opportunities. And yeah, like Daniel said, say yes when someone asks. Yeah, I guess I'll go. Uh, I definitely say you should be a sponge your first like half year to your first your entirety of your freshman year. That's the approach I kind of took because I wanted to get involved in everything because I knew afterwards after that half a year to a year I had three full years to kind of define what I really wanted to get into. After that first like semester to the full year you kind of understand all the opportunities and all the things that you can get into instead of having to think about later down the road, oh, I should have done this. You can get out the way very early to understand kind of what you want part of you to be in the end and who you actually want to be as a person. That's what I was saying. And, and I, I feel like I'm not going to say anything different than what was previously said, just, uh, uh, again, I came in as an adult student, so I, I lived off campus, and, and I don't think I had the opportunities to get involved in Wilson as 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 the rest of the alum have. Uh, and, and if there's one thing that I wish I could go back, it is become more involved in, in the campus life there. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily get those opportunities, and, and likewise, I I sort of shunned some of them opportunities because I was work, I had other obligations, I, I was focused on other things. But if, if I had the opportunity to go back, I, I, I would have been much more involved in Wilson during, during my time there. All right, fantastic. Um, so I believe, taking a look here, yeah, I think that covers us for, for now. Um, I know we're a little bit over our time, so I thank everybody for you know, sticking with us. Um, but at this point, yeah, I, I want to thank everybody, of course, um, who attended. I want to thank our presenters, Caitlin, Karis, Danielle, Ian, Katie, Keon. Thank you so much for taking your time, um, you know, to be here and talk to the students. Um, and those of you who, who are, of course, open to getting those questions moving forward, um, I'll touch base with you and we'll get something out to everybody tomorrow. So anybody who's on the call, if you do have questions, um, you know, down the line, whether it's your admissions counselor, where it's anybody on this call, um, pretty much anybody at Wilson, we're here to answer your questions. You know, as you look for a college, as you search for what that next step is, um, that's a very personal journey. You know, it's something that you're the only one that knows what you're looking for. And so the answer is you figure out, you know, what questions do you want answers to um, and find somebody that can give you the answer. And that's what we're here for. So, you know, as you move forward, um, just know that we are here, um, you know, even though, of course, we support you while you're on campus, we want to support you even during this search. So I thank you for joining us today. Um, I genuinely hope everybody is safe and healthy out there. Um, we look forward to inviting you to visit campus as soon as we're able to do that. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions, we're definitely here. But again, thank you all for presenting. Thank you all for attending. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening and we'll, uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>